It's no accident that sounds like you're leveling up in a video game. 48% of 18 to 29 year olds have an online dating profile. Make them work for it. 45% of people say they're more frustrated with this form of dating than hopeful. There are so many people you can connect with. Should I swipe right? Swipe wrong. Swipe wrong. Setting the record straight on dating apps. Everyday people telling everyday stories of the swipe right world with your host, Chaos. Well, I know he had a good time. Ah, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and of course, good night. How's everybody doing? Welcome to, uh, where are we? We're the Swipe Wrong Podcast. It's the big banner behind me, the virtual banner behind me, because if I paint, I should paint my walls that way. That'd be awesome. I am your host. I am that guy. I am chaos. Welcome to the number one podcast amongst asexual contortionists. Uh, Hopefully you guys are doing amazing. Everybody's doing awesome. Um, uh, let's, let's actually just do a little bit of housekeeping. Please do me a favor, like, follow, subscribe, tell all your friends, tell all your enemies, tell anybody you could think that might enjoy the show. (laughs) And for those of you who already have, it shows and we appreciate it very much. Thank you so much. Um, get a hold of us. Uh, 317-426-6616. Call, email, call, text, email us at swipewrongpod at gmail.com. Uh, make sure to get on to Amazon and check out the Musician's Playbook. Uh, that's uh, what our uh, our just amazing Jay put together. Uh, and uh, I think you guys will enjoy that. He's working on another one. And uh, I, he, he kind of got me working on uh, the Swipe Wrong book as well, which uh, I... <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it. It's coming along. Slowly but surely, it's coming along. So this week, uh, we've had some great stories. We've had some good stuff going over the past few weeks. I ran into a couple of uh, situations, uh, a couple of questions, uh, a couple of things that that I was like, all right, it's time to bring back in a couple of uh, a couple of my buddies. I want to say the experts because they are, but they're also my buddies too. So this week, we're talking to uh, Dating Intelligence's uh, Christopher Lewis, and inspired life tappings, Alice and Jane. So uh, you guys definitely should should get a hold of them. But we, we all kind of uh, collaborate on this Facebook page um, called uh, uh, the Honest AF Sex Dating and Relationships. So we kind of uh, talk about it. Really, it's a bunch of memes and, and a little bit of a forum of, of everybody just kind of sharing their thoughts and, and other people just want to go ahead and throw up some memes and ask some questions. There's some good stuff that pops up there. So, but we collaborate on that. So if you guys want to jump on there, by all means, go ahead. Um, so uh, let's, uh, let's just enjoy it. So, I mean, sit back, relax, put your feet up, grab your popcorn, uh, <clears throat> get it buttered, throw some caramel on there. If you want to throw some sea salt, whatever it is you're into. If you're in traffic, please don't hit that person next to you and enjoy threes, not a crowd. Disclaimer, the views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the speaker and do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions or any entities they represent. This podcast is about dating experiences. It is not to say one dating app is better or worse than another. So I was on uh, I know someone else's show earlier and she's new to to uh, dating divorced uh, I don't know maybe about eight months ago been on the apps for about that ma- that amount of time and she's she's going through the process of figuring out what she wants like what like if she wants relationship if she just wants sex or she, what she wants and I don't know if you guys have talked to anybody about this one thing that surprised me that she feels like she's running to. She feels like when she is aggressive in the apps, going after uh, just like, hey, I'm just in the mood for some physical fun, that it she's almost feels like the guys back off and she's getting somewhat shamed. Uh, shamed might be a little extreme, but the getting almost pushbacks as to as to like it, since she's the aggressor, um, some of the guys are put off by that. Have you either one of you heard anything like this happening in your worlds? I see it. Yeah. Nod. So take it first. <laughs> you want to take it? We want I, me to take it first. No, I, no, I, no, why doesn't the, the, the woman who's nodding say go for it? 
<laughs> yes, I do. I I see that on on both sides. And I think that there's the human condition of we always want what we can't have, first mm. of all, right? So sometimes like directness can incite this like, well, okay, that's not, there's no, there's no sort of um, mystery. There's no sort of allure. But I think honestly, a bigger piece of it is most people don't have like the best self-esteem, right? Like, like the average person even thinks like worries a little bit about is something wrong with me or, you know, and some people worry a lot about is something wrong with me. And so if you don't have a super healthy self-esteem and somebody's into you real quick, your subconscious mind is going to go, well, there, there must be something wrong with that person because why would they be so into me so quick? So, and that might be more along the relationships than just kind of looking for like a booty call kind of thing. But I do see that a lot that like yeah. my, especially like women I've worked with, they'll say like, well, I don't know, this guy was like so into me and, and he wanted to like be exclusive within the first like couple of weeks of dating. And, and I'm like, but you want an exclusive relationship. That's what you're looking for. And this, and you want a guy to be into you. That's what you've been telling me. And then when that shows up, it's a turnoff to you. Well, I think it's a turnoff because they think, well, there must be something wrong with him. And it's very subconscious. I don't think that's right. right. Yeah. And on, and on the other side of that as well, um, I feel like there's a flip to that. So let's talk about the opposite end of that. I feel like when, if it's, let's say if it's an older woman, like, you know, like a, a cougar of, of, as you will, right. Going for a younger guy and she's straightforward pushing the issue more, a guy will be more, a younger guy will be more attracted to that because it's someone of, of power, someone of like, who's got their shit together. That's actually pushing the envelope. And they're just like, wow, let's just see where this goes. Whereas, you know, it, it would be the same as if it was a guy of, you know, my age, who's going for someone who's younger, right? So that guy is going to be coming across a little more arrogant, a little more powerful because he's already established, but he knows what he wants. So the younger girl might be, might just be like, okay, well, long for the ride as well in that aspect as well. So there's, there's two gives or give or takes about this thing. But I feel like, like Allison was saying, if it's someone of age appropriateness, they're going to think what's wrong with this person. They're pushing too much, you know, because it's just like, it's a little too forceful on either end. And there's no chase really for a guy at that point where a girl's being that aggressive. Now it's a kind of a turn off a little bit where you're just like, I want to be the one doing the chasing. So let me allow myself to do that. So I feel like it goes both ways in this instance, but especially for a, a female who's actually using her, you know, her uh, masculinity a little bit more and really understands what she wants, but goes for what she wants and actually not, uh, I guess the easiest way to say is she's being turned down, which is kind of, you know, crazy. So with that being said, Chris, what, what was her outtake on this though? How did she, how did it make her feel? It made her feel less of, I think it's the best way to put it less of in, uh, really reluctant to, uh, kind of be who she wanted to be. That's, that's, that's how she felt. Uh, she yeah. felt like, uh, if she took that, that aggressive approach, um, is she like you're saying like it wasn't just that the act was getting rejected as she was being she felt like she was being rejected so then the self-esteem comes into to account and um we were just kind of talking like i said i, I was i was uh on her show and and the thing that i thought was interesting too was like like from my perspective like i've, I've said it to you guys many times I said it on on the show i do all the time the male ego is the biggest fucking piece of trash ever like it's just so like it gets in the way of everything like gambling sex relationships uh i don't know the grocery store like you got to get the the i can't get the the non-name brand my ego like i got the best stuff and in this case like it just instead of like letting things organically happen go ahead like because most of the time that's what the guys want too um is uh and just just kind of rolling with it and, and enjoying the experience it's the ego's got to get in the way and they got to be the slay the dragon type of mentality. And it's yeah. insane to me. It's, it's yeah. like, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It, 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 do, I, do I sound like I'm off base on that? No, no, I don't think so at all. I think the problem with it, and, and this is where I always have such a hard time having this conversation with women. The problem with it is there comes across a little bit of a message of like, play games and let the guys chase you. And it's not, that either because when you play games like 
guys are really good at seeing through that. Like you guys have like this gut level instinct for knowing when like <laughs> shit is being gamed, you know? <laughs> and so it's not about that. So when I talk about it, I know like there's a whole chapter in my book about this and it was really hard to write because I thought, oh my gosh, like all my feminist friends are going to want to like shoot me for this. And I, you know, I consider myself a feminist, but what I talk about in this chapter is in heterosexual relationships, it's really important for a woman to be in her feminine energy with the guy. I mean, we can be in our masculine energy at work and parenting or, and we have to be, you know, and masculine energy is rewarded financially in our society and stuff. But when it comes to the relationship with the guy, women have to be able to just kind of like take a step back, be in their bodies and allow a man to kind of come to them. And I noticed that a lot of women that struggle with giving up that sort of masculine, like taking charge in relationships, I think a lot of it is control issues. And they're afraid of letting go of control. He knows. He's like, he's like, yeah, I know that shit. Right. But here's I mean, what do you guys no, think? I, Allison, you're 100 percent correct. But but it's like, but I'm gonna okay, I'll say you're oh wait, you correct. cannot say, say yeah, so you can't say you're 100 percent correct I'll and then follow right, it up with a but right, you're 100 like percent percent correct. I'll go with 90 percent stuff. I agree right. with you. Oh I see. No, no. But I also hear that that masculinity that women have. Wait, sorry, that masculinity that women have, that also sets the tone on who they should be the whole time throughout the relationship. Because I feel, once again, if, if they are too much in their feminine, guys take advantage of it. You know, they feel like there's some women get walked over, some women can't speak their voice, some don't speak up, they can't communicate, right? They just go along with the flow. So let's just be very careful on that fixed flow energy on how how yeah. a woman in their feminine, how much they need to be in that fem femininity, right? Because, you right. know, like you said, some other people out there, the feminists out there will disagree with that. Yeah. I will disagree 10% of it because I want that woman to be able to stand up for herself and say, look, yes. I don't like this shit. You know what okay, I mean? Okay. That's a really important caveat. I'm yeah. glad you brought that up because yes. And I do talk about that in my book. In fact, I actually say a doormat, like doormat behavior <laughs> to me is actually masculine energy. It is because a doormat is overdoing for the guy. She's, oh, can I cook for you? Can I clean for you? Can I, uh, oh, you want to go to your house? Never my house. Okay, okay, okay. So that is, that, that's still masculine energy because it's still doing. It's, yeah. it's doing and overdoing. Feminine energy, like a woman who's truly in her feminine energy should feel relaxed, should feel like she's receiving. So it should actually be energy rising for her. Mm -hmm. If you're in a relationship and it feels energy draining, that's not, no, no, no. That's not okay, you know? Yeah. But something's going wrong. And so- it's very important. And that's, you know, obviously like why my book is titled Learn to Date Like a Goddess. Like you got to envision being a goddess. A goddess or a queen is someone who is, you know, worshipped and adored. And she's able to receive that worship and adoring. But she's also in charge and she has boundaries. And that's the thing. The boundaries are what allows you to be safely really feminine because it's like, here are my boundaries. And if you cross them, that's not okay. Or I'm done or whatever. You know what I mean? If it's like you stick to your boundaries, then you can be safely in your feminine and you don't need to be over controlling because you're just like, no, this is this, it is what it is. And you either rise to, you know, what I'm asking you to, or you don't. And I'm not afraid to walk away. I think the fear of walking away is what keeps so many people in bad relationships because they're afraid of the unknown on the other side. I love that. See, Chris, she summed it up. She did. <laughs> uh, uh, summed up really well. Wow. Okay. And, and I'm going to throw a monkey wrench in it because that's <laughs> how I roll, I guess. <laughs> so your book talks about these things, right? Is your book like a 12 step program like AA is? Because it feels like to me for a woman or a person, just whoever to have boundaries, to be in their feminine or their masculine and to be like, to have this type of self-confidence, it does like, like it can't, that, that's a, that's a long cycle for a lot of people to get through. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I have the tapping, so I do EFT tapping sure. and it's really amazing at clearing out old emotional gunk and, and subconscious blockages. And at the end of every chapter, there is a tapping script. So for instance, in the end of that chapter, there's a tapping script on, even though it's hard for me to let go of control and just be in my feminine flow, I am 
willing to try anyway. And so it's like you tap on that urge to have control and to have power and have like all your, you know, all you're juggling all the balls in the air and you're not willing to let any go, you know? And, and I, I had a, a, actually a good friend who, when she read that chapter, she was like, you know, what's so interesting when I was going through my divorce, one thing my husband said to me is, I just feel like you've got this, your whole world, all your shit together, you're running everything. And there was literally no room for me in your world, in your life, you know? So she was just like, so keeping everything going and so many women feel that they have to. And so if you can, if you can relax and let go and receive actually your partner's help or, you know, it's like, okay, so, so you, you come home one night and your partner's made you dinner and a woman who's really in her masculine is going to be like, Oh, I defrosted chicken already. And now what am I going to do? I'm going to have to throw that away. Right. But a woman who can be more in her feminine is going to go, She's going to like omit the part about having to throw away the chicken and be like, thank you, babe. That's so amazing. I really appreciate you trying to take care of me. That's the, that's kind of how it plays out. And it is hard. It's not easy. It's not easy. Yeah. It's not easy at all. Because I mean, you see it, like you see it a lot. It's like, especially where Allison was saying, when someone's really super busy and they're, and they're in that power phase of like controlling so many other components of their lives, you know, it's like, obviously we probably both have clients like that where they're coming to us and just like, you just need to just take a minute, breathe and allow your partner just to allow, allow them to do something for you for once, you know, it's like, and just that one time and you can see that already hyperventilating, like, well, I don't know if he can handle it or I don't, I'm like, it's just, He's gonna mess it up. right, exactly. Right. It's just, he just made you dinner, whether it yeah. sucks or not, just enjoy it, you know, right. and then allow him to have a little bit more of that kind of like presence in your life, because it's going to take a lot off your plate that you are so focused on keeping control of, let him take over. And like you said, Allison, as well, most guys at that moment will get complacent, right? Or they'll get lazy. And all of a sudden, then the woman's um, resentful of it because she's like, he's not doing anything. And I'm like, that's because you never gave, you never allowed him to do the things that he wanted to do. So, right. and it gets to that point where now the guy's like, oh, well, you know, right. let me just get a beer and watch some sports or do whatever. <laughs> and she comes home and she's pissed off. Like she has to do everything, but it's like, right. she doesn't really have to, if she would have just allotted that stuff to him in the first place. Right. Right. Yeah. Releasing for a moment doesn't mean releasing for good. Right. So if you release for that moment, for that night, yeah. cool. Enjoy the moment. You know, I right. take that act of servitude, which maybe is love language that he just doesn't get or she doesn't right. get to to unfold. With, so. Without. Oh, uh, you freeze up every now and then. The right? backhanded but... comments behind it, though, as well. Oh, no. did, look, did if you want to you want to without, without without the backhanded comments, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You froze up for a second and cut the end. Yeah. Because if the backhanded comments and compliments come through like that that's wwe territory it's on <laughs> it's it's in the ring so friend of mine all right so uh, passed away about a year ago and so i keep up on his family his wife and his or his widow i guess and his kids and i was i caught up with his widow not too long ago and she is dating now which i think is great because he would want her to be happy so one thing that she brought up, and maybe Chris, you can start with this one, is that she is a self-assured, confident, independent woman that she's having a hard time having uh, connections with guys because they're intimidated by this. Uh, and it's it, and and I had to ask. I said, "Are you this, or are you kind of being a bitch when you're out there, and just like like just coming off that way?" Which there's nothing wrong with. And she's like, no, I'm just so self-assured. So is there insight into that, that, that you can help guys out with or what she can do? Or I don't know, we could talk about the right. candy factory again, if you want to either way. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think first and foremost, like, you know, like when you asked her that and she just kind of said like, you know, I'm being self-assured, it can come across the wrong way being too self-assured. Like as far as like when, you know, when you're sitting with someone on a first date and you feel like not that it's an interview, but she's looking at you with just like asking these questions that just come across kind of like as a matter of fact versus mm -hmm. really interesting and who you are and what you're doing. It's more like, oh, so you do that or oh, blah, blah, blah. So it does come across a little bit intimidating on the way that a person's body language is staring at you. And then because she's so assured of what she wants, she's not allowing herself to be open to the possibilities of what this person may offer regardless, you know, because she can't be everything and because, or else she would not be in the dating space right now, obviously, right? right? So she's looking for something. So my question is, is like, what I would have to ask her, what are you really looking for? And then trying to suss out what she needs and who she really is, and then breaking it down from there. Because as Allison had said earlier, it's something that a lot of women in their fixed flow energy and their masculine 
are always still trying to be in control of even the smallest situations. And even when they don't recognize it, it still comes across that way. So, yeah. Yeah. Allison awesome. Chains, what do you got? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like, I'm, I'm like sitting over here nodding, like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that that's, that's a really good point. And, and it is, I, it, it does make me wonder how quickly she's making jumping to these conclusions. And also, how much interest is she showing in the other person? Like, is she showing up? I, I do think sometimes when you're dating again at midlife, like, you know, you forget what it was like <laughs> way back when and you forget. And it was sort of more natural back then anyway, because you just kind of like met people or whatever. And now it's like you're online and then you go out on this formal date. So you show up to it like a job interview. And if you mm -hmm. show up to it like a job interview, like I'm going to give my resume and don't necessarily like, like have a lot of just sort of more natural curiosity, like tell me about you and tell me, you know, and just kind of pulling because the fact of the matter is everybody likes talking about themselves, you know? <laughs> so, and not that you should only ask someone about themselves. Of course, you, that would be doormatish, right? So you, of right. course, that you want give and take, but I think it's important to really be honest with yourself about like, well, do I demonstrate curiosity or do I jump to conclusions real quick and judge guys and say, oh no, this is. Yeah, yeah. right. And also to add a note to that, what we I said earlier is it's the body language as well. You know, like yes. if she's kind of just like sitting there kind of closed off, it's got a guy can pick that up right away. Like, oh my God, like she's just like, just looking at me with daggers or she's just not interested, you know? So, yeah. so from a guy's standpoint, you asked me what a guy should do. In this instance, like I've seen a lot of girls like that where I'm like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, let's go. Because I can, it's a challenge for me. You know, it's a challenge. So for me, it's like, I just, I, I, it's almost like you break down the layers, you strip a layer by layer at a time by the more that they come at you, the more that you go back by just laughing, making them feel, you know, coming back with a little bit of a snarky answer, anything to break the ice. But once you capture her and you see that little twinkle and get her soften up a little bit, that's when you know that she's going to sit back and take that. But I think that she's really looking for someone that's going to challenge her and not back off, off of that, you know, because once someone pushes in either direction, what does the other person do? We go, whoa. And, then, and all of a sudden now you're like, kind of like, behind this wall and they're just in this, let's say behind this glass, right? They have you trapped now, you know, they have, they have yeah. you where you want to, you're not strong enough for them. So why am I yeah. sitting here? So you have yeah. to be able to get that banter back for that push pull more than anything else. Yeah. I think, I think there's two things to impact to like to unpack there. I think one thing is like, we talk about, talk about first dates a lot of times as like some people will classify them as job interviews. Some people will walk in and it's almost like, Hey, this is a presentation of me selling myself <laughs> to this person or that person selling myself to me. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, yeah. there's no way, like what are you, what are you looking for? 10 bucks an hour? Are you looking for 50 bucks an hour? That's not going <laughs> to, it's not the type of job application that you're looking for. Like, there's no yeah. way like it's, it's these interrogation questions. It's, it should be an organic experience. That's something you just get And if, Like you may know within 10 minutes, like, Hey, this isn't for me. And there's nothing wrong with saying my mom's calling me. Yeah, I know she's dead, but she's still calling me. So I got to go, <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, those are part add, of your boundaries. Yeah. To, to add to that as well. One thing that I've been telling a lot of my uh, female clients is that I say, look, I go, and, and you should see the look on their face. When I say this, I go, look, I go, you need, instead of presenting yourself as like, you know, I'm here, I am, I'm, this is what I'm, if you're looking for this, this is me, 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 like you just said, I tell a lot of them to say, look, take a, take a step back, especially the winds in their masculine, take a step back and allow the guy to show them, to show you what they're made of, allow them to like, let them do the loops, go through the hoops for you, you know, and this sure. way you can decide if this person is right for you, not if you're right for this person. And a lot of them are like, wow, I've never actually thought. Don't yeah. Know. Yeah. I thought about sure. that before. So I usually tell them just to take a step back. Sorry, take a step back, relax, and just allow the guy to lead in that sense of like saying, what does what does he have to offer you more than the other way around? Yeah, like for I, sure. If I'm and in an I, in, go ahead. I'm sorry, Allison. Go ahead. I was gonna say, I think online dating like makes that more intense too, right? Because if you're if you're I always talk about this with my clients, it's like if you're swiping past like a hundred guys and you only match with one then you automatically feel this anxiety like, oh, I got to get him. I've got to get yeah. him to like me because he was the only one. Whereas if you went to like a charity event and there were like a few hundred people there and you met one guy and made a connection and got his number, walked away, you'd be psyched. You'd be like, yeah, right? And, and you wouldn't necessarily feel that much pressure. You'd be like, we made a connection. But it's that scarcity mindset that the apps can do to us yeah. that I think sometimes may put... 
this artificial pressure on too on on first dates and stuff yeah. like that. God, you're making me feel bad. I walked out of a charity event here. They would no numbers, Allison. Wow, oh. doing something wrong, bro. <laughs> Don't lie. Your fucking pin was broke or your phone wasn't on or something. There's no way you're walking out of a charity event without phone numbers. That's bullshit. Maybe you were walking around closed off. I, I yeah. might have been. Yeah. <laughs> you, were, you were sitting there going, who's going to get my number? That was the game you were playing. You weren't you were getting numbers. But, that, but that's the attitude. Once again, what you just said, that's the attitude that people should have. It's like, you know, instead of like, what can I offer that person? What can they offer me? You know, sure, it's like, sure. and if you're being, if you're leading with just your genuine self, your authentic self, you know, what it's like, just if you, and this is something that, you know, like all of us probably as coaches want to coach with our clients. It's like, look, allow yourself just to lead with your true self. You know what I mean? That's all you can do. And if the person doesn't like you, that's on them. It wasn't the right person. Right. But right. you know, and, and on the other half, now I have this one client where she's always gets like the first date for her. She always gets to a second date always, you know? So now I have to look into her. We have a, a session coming up soon, but I told her, I said, look, now we have to sit back and think about why you're getting these second dates. But after that, it fails. And I know, and like I told her, I go, your personality, she has an amazing personality, which every guy would love, you know, she's easygoing. She talks, you know, she's communicative. So that's already a win. That's already plausible for a second date where most guys will sit there and go, wow, I don't have to do anything. This is great. Like, she's awesome. Like, let's see, this is like, she's one of the guys, right? You know, sure. I'll go on a second date with her, but then it yeah. fails after that. So now we need to, I need to figure out with her why it's been failing. So, so there's that flip side where people are really good at that, but then they end up failing second, third date wise, because their intro is now gone kind of stale let's say. Oh, interesting. And when you say feeling, cause that was always, I will say that that was always my experience. I always yeah. got a second date always. And it, whether I wanted it or not. And <laughs> I was talking to one of my guy friends one time about it. And I was like, Oh my God, like, I know he's, he wants to go out again, but now like, I don't want to. And I have to go through that whole like painful, like awkward conversation. And he was like, you know what it is, don't you? I'm like, no, what? He's like, you go on these dates and you're still just your normal bubbly, like chatty right. self. So they think that you like them and they think right. you're into them. And like, you're just being you. And they don't know that that's just, that you would be that way with a carpet as well as with this guy, you know? And so- I also, Allison, also think about this though, what you just said, you're just being you, but also- in that space though, you're actually doing more work than what the guy needs to do. So they're looking to him, like, like I said, once again, wow, like she's, she's talking this amazing. I don't have to say anything. I don't have to do much, but she's fun. She still likes me. She still yeah. likes me because yeah. she, you're doing all the work. And, and so for them, it's like, yes, I want a second date, you know? And then after right. the second, it's like, you know, obviously you have the right to choose at this moment as well. But I, but that's something that she needs to learn that, look, this is why this is fail. And I call it a fail. I don't mean to call it that way, but most people killed to get to the second date, yeah. but I call it a fail for her because she's not progressing as far as, you know, finding that person that she wants to be with. And right. so, so there has to be a sense of change now on, on how she's walking into that first date, being a little bit more um, mindful and of what she's looking for. And not just kind of going through the rigmarole and having fun and just kind of, and, and which is a very strange thing to say, because most of the time, like we say, we want that person to go on the fun date, first date, having fun with her. Right. Now, I think she's going with a little more intention. Right. You know? And and it is yeah. interesting. It will be interesting to see her experience because I did change after that. After okay. I got that feedback from my guy friend, I did change. And then the next date I went on that I wasn't that into the guy, I I pulled myself back and I was just a little bit more quiet, which was hard for me because you guys know me and I can talk forever. And so it was hard, but I did. I pulled myself back. I let him do more work. He really couldn't. You there know, you I go. Die, honestly. But and then like he at the end of the date, he was like, well, we should do this again. And I think actually even we did. He was like, what about Friday? And I hate it when they ask me out right on the spot. And I was like. <laughs> Um, yeah, maybe, or, you know, whatever. And then like, I think he took my, um, maybe and ran with it. And then we never went out again, but I was like, Oh, and he never like called me again or anything. So I was like, Oh, okay. This does work. When, yeah. you know, if I am not as bubbly, then the guy kind of picks up on it. And cause I also, and this is maybe a poor boundary issue on my part. I will totally own that Chris, but like, I will admit that I will not end a bad date early the way okay. I mean, Luckily, right now, I have a boyfriend and I'm not dating. So I don't have to worry about these things. Those are, those but, see that? 
<laughs> it is such a relief not to because these stories are bringing it all up for me i was thinking about before coming on today i was thinking about some of my dating horror stories and like one was like a dude who was like throwing up on the date wow. and like running to the bathroom and coming stop back it. And stop like, it now i need to hear the whole thing you yes, tell please. me what happened yes it can't it can't yes, be please. oh by the way this is how it ended uh, hello Where, where's that hand that hand yeah. phrasing yeah <laughs> I'm grabbing some popcorn right now and listening to this story. <laughs> Thank you for being along for the ride on the Swipe Wrong Podcast. The show is produced by Jay Pelham. If you want to reach out to us, we want to hear your story. 317-426-6616. Make sure to text, leave a voicemail. We'll get back to you. Shoot us an email at swipewrongpod at gmail.com. We are on Facebook, Insta, Twitter, YouTube. We are definitely out there. I am the host of the show. My name is Chaos. And please make sure to take a listen to us next week because the saga, it continues. <laughs>